I'm Terry Allen, and I want to talk to you today about tonality and harmony in music and what is the difference. And I want to use guitar tunings as an example of how tonality varies in music. By going back to the time when John Lennon was a teenager learning to play guitar from his mother. Now John Lennon was taken away from his mother and sent to live with his aunt by social workers, presumably because she was playing guitar in skiffle bands. And we don't know very much about what guitar tunings the Beatles used because they operated under an ethic where they never wanted to use a cliché or a tuning in an obvious way. And they kept the tuning secret by and large. But we do know two facts about the Beatles and their guitar tunings. And one is that John said that when he met Paul, Paul was playing in a banjo tuning, which is probably this tuning. This is the oldest tuning in America. The first uh, printed guitar tuning was in, printed guitar music was in this tuning. And it's probably at least 200 years old, and it's known as open G. Paul said that he had to show John how to play chords in standard tuning. And then the other fact we know is from Walt Everett's book, The Beatles as Musicians, which is a two-volume set that discusses every Beatles song in great detail and tells you what the mode is, a mixedillion or aeolian, tells you the chord analysis and the rhythm in great detail, but never once mentions what guitar key the music is played in or what tuning the music is, and the author appears to have no understanding of the importance of the guitar in the Beatles' compositions, because most of their music is written on guitar, and yet it's sold as piano music. Now, when you consider Open G, uh, it, it's kind of, I think, the king of guitar tunings. Open D is the queen and open G is the king because it has the greatest number of variants and it has a preeminent position in rock and roll and blues because of its dominant tonality which makes a nice seventh chord sound. And it really is probably the most versatile tuning. And I want to try and show you some of the positions in different tunings so that you can see how the tonality is related to the tuning. The, the problem of the tonality in music is interesting because if you read the music theory books, you realize that they don't really know what tonality is and how it's different from harmony. And so there have been like a hundred theories about what tonality in music is. They just don't know. And the reason, the problem with tonality is this. We know tonality has something to do with the key, the musical key. But if musical keys are all the same, like on the piano, you just move them up and down the scale and they're exactly the same structures, then how do we understand how tonality varies? Now, there's no confusion here about the difference between tonality and harmony and what they mean, because both are forms of expression. Tonality is short for tonal expression, and harmony is short for harmonic expression. And what expression or expressivity means is the same thing it means in language and computer programming. It means the sum total of every possible movement, relation, and element in a system. So when I say harmony, what I'm talking about is the sum total of every possible pitch, every possible relation between pitch, and every possible movement that pitch can make. 
When I'm talking about tonality, I'm talking about the expression of the tone, the musical tone. And the difference is that a pitch and a note or a tone, because note or tone means the same thing, are different. And let me see if I can show you why. Now, this tuning is open G. And the guitar is tuned to an open G major chord, D, G, D, G, B, D. And in the code of Blind Blake, which I think in his records he has a code a system that he uses to refer to tunings, he would call this tuning Papa. It's the Papa tuning because it goes D, G, D, G. And that's kind of like Papa, P-A-P-A. -A. So that's how he, he, he recognizes this family of tunings that go D, G, D, G. And then on the top we have the third of the chord on this, this fifth string and then the top string is another D. And so this, this tuning is three strings different than standard tuning, but it has the inner three strings are the same. So you can be confused about whether something in the key of G is played in this tuning, open G tuning, or in standard tuning because they're the inner three th strings are the same and only the outer strings are different. And if I play my chord like this in open G, you see that I'm fingering it like a G chord in standard tuning, but I've just moved my fingers up. So you cannot really hear the difference between these chords directly. And yet they function in a very different way and they are related to the other notes in the field in a different way. So, in standard tuning you play your G note here at the third fret and you have no other choice. We say that note has a redundancy of one. It only is found here on the first string, third fret. But in this tuning, there's a redundant G note. And that means it's on the second string and on the first string at the fifth fret. Now, these two notes have the same harmonic value. They're both G. And you can't really tell the difference between them in a recording particularly, it's very confusing which one is which. But they behave in a different way. And that's because this one can be played open without any fingers. And this one must be played with at least one finger. Now, this open string note is very convenient but it can't move down on the string. It's at the bottom of the string. It can only go up. And so you have these kind of uh, licks where you have like a kicker. And then you have that same lick coming off of this note. options. I have one G that's open and the other G I can slide into that can move down or move up. And therefore the harmonic value of these two notes is the same but the tonal value is not. And the guitarist can exploit that as the basis for an illusion since you can't tell which note he's playing. But it makes a difference in how it sounds. So the funny thing about tonality in guitar is you have to play the note at the right position and the right pitch at the same time or they won't sound right. 
And that means you can play the same pitch value notes in different tunings and they will sound different. And so that's what I'm trying to demonstrate to you. Now let's look at uh, Open G here and I want to point out some of the features of tonality in this tuning. And one thing it has very facile shuffle positions. Shuffle positions that you like to play that are easy. They're much easier than in standard tuning because they only take one or two fingers. Whereas in standard tuning, you end up doing these two and three finger shuffles like this. You get very tiring and cause fatigue before you can play a couple of 12 bars. So in, st in this tuning, we have a shuffle here. problem where you have what I call the stretch turnaround where the G tonic is up here on this string and when you do the turnaround you get into this awkward stretch and so that's kind of a distinctive problem and the other distinctive problem in open G is this power chord position. Now this, this is a G power chord and it looks like I'm playing an A7. That would be kind of an A7 position that you could move up and down the neck in standard. And so in, in the G tuning, I'm kind of moved up here. This is G, but it's up from your relative landmark. This is probably how he plays little, um, his castles in the sand. Now, the wind cries Mary is often thought to be like maybe in standard tuning or some kind of drop D or something like that. And this is not the easiest way to play it, but it's really an interesting way to play it in open G where you go like this. funny thing where you have um, this kind of a combination of the tonic over the uh, subdominant and dominant chords in bar positions that are closely related. So if this is G, this is C, this is D.
best things in life are free. But you can give them to the birds and bees and our money. Now, that's kind of unusual because I'm playing in the key of G, in the key of E in open G. And one way we look at the tunings is what are the favored keys. Now, in standard tuning, everybody knows the favored keys are the cage mnemonic, C-A-G-E-D. And in open G, the favored keys are obviously G and C, D is not that favored, but you have these other keys which are E flat and B. So when you see a song in rock and roll that's in B flat or E flat, you should think that maybe they might be in open G tuning. And an interesting principle here is shown in the Beatles in their ear, early years of recording where they're kind of amateurish and they're using these different tunings in a very open way whereas later on it becomes very difficult to figure out exactly which tuning they might be using. But in the early years it's, it's fairly obvious. The main problem is that you have a, a mixing of let's say like open D and open G and it's kind of hard to tell which one's which. But um, a good example of how they use tunings is boys, boys, where you have this bar chord and it's moved back two frets. And that's kind of a dominant seventh statement. I'm not going to analyze that for you, but this is kind of like a suspended chord and this is like the B flat. And so what they do is they go like this. Oh yeah, boys, boys. The, the talk about boys. Yeah, you talk about boys. Yeah, you talk about boys. Yeah, you talk about boys. What a bundle of joy. So that's such a simple form that rocks out. You, there's a lot of value to a bar chord because you can slide it around, you can whip it back and forth, up and down the neck in a really expressive way. And so the notes that are assigned to a bar chord are very important. And the principle that the Beatles are using here is that they want to play in a key that's not the lowest key. If I'm playing the G chord, I have no position to fall back to. But if I'm playing the B flat, then I can fall back two frets and I can slide up into the B. So that becomes a recurring theme in Beatles tonality is that they're using the guitar tuning but they're often not in the key that the guitar tuning is named for. So if the, oh, if the tuning is G you may find that they're not playing in, in G but they're playing in some other key. And an example of how this can be useful is as shown by a kind of a trick. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to play blues in the key of E. And then at some point I'm going to drop down to D. Now you might think I'm just playing in E standard.
And see how I get the seventh chord? This is, this is the E chord where I have to finger the E at the second fret. And then when I lift it up, I automatically get from the tuning the E seventh chord. And that makes this tuning very seventh chord oriented. And you also get this lining up of the pentatonic scale across the frets like this. Emphasis on the zero, third, and fifth fret. That makes it a very pentatonic sound, very delightful for playing blues. And you have this kind of thing going on, like in all shook up, where you can slam into the B flat. Bless my soul, what's wrong with me? Touching like a man in a fuzzy tree. My friends all say that I'm queer as a bug. I'm in love. I'm all shook up. I say, yeah. was a big influence on John Lennon and if you look at his portfolio of songs you kind of get the idea that he's playing uh, in open G a lot and maybe some open D but he has a lot of songs in B flat and of course his famous one is um, Fade Not Fade Away. his portfolio you see a lot of songs that are in open G like um, words of love and so forth and um, then you have songs like day tripper now that's a, always an interesting lick because you get the feeling that the first note has to be on an open string <laughs> harmonic figure that's good to run through the different tunings and you see how it falls and it's actually much easier to play in D family tunes
D. Double drop D is one string away from open G. They're very closely related and makes kind of a bridge between the G and D family tunings. And what I just showed is it's really hard for me to play day tripper in open G, but very easy to play in this D family. Now I know you can also play this in standard tuning and I discussed this with a guitar teacher and he surprised me by showing me a video on YouTube of George Harrison playing it in standard tuning. But I didn't see any videos of John Lennon playing it in standard tuning and I'm not convinced that the um, videos that they made uh, may have intended to conceal the real tuning. And if you do a careful analysis of day tripper, you see it's probably in something like drop D or double drop D. And then when you get to the bridge in the song, there's a third version of that opening lick. And it seems to be like in another guitar tuning, it seems to come off of uh, an, like um, another, another string that doesn't fit in that tuning. But the song has the classic format of the Beatles song where you've got like a bass run kind of lick or some sort of hook and then that's followed by a series of bar chords that move up and down the neck where you have the part that goes Beatles songs have that section where there are bar chords that are moving up and down the neck and a lot of times they kind of want they don't want to make it too obvious or too much of a cliche. Um, now there is a, another lesson there in that day tripper lick because the first one you could play it in standard tuning but it's a lot more fun in open D. I mean sorry in drop D. And then you come to the G part of that lick. And the weird thing is, it doesn't start on an open string. It starts on a G up here that you have to fret with your fingers. Now the novice who is not familiar with open G or open D will will perceive that as something unusual, as maybe an error or a mistake or bad technique because you have to reach up here and hold this down and then jump back to the open position. And that seems like a peculiar technique because we're taught that you want to keep your hand in one position and not move it and here in this run it's elemental that you play this note and pick up your hand. And the reason is because this G in the D tuning is not redundant. There's only one of these G's in the whole guitar and it has to be played on the first string at the fifth fret. It's not like open G where you get another G to choose from. In the D family you've got only this one and so D and G family guitar players don't see that as being unusual. They think this is the natural home for G. Whereas if you're in standard tuning, you think the G is here and it's difficult for you to accept that it's actually up here. When you finally figure that out, say if you, if you learn all your Beatles songs in standard tuning and then you try drop D tuning, what will happen is it will seem like almost all of their songs are in drop D because every song when you lower this string to D you fit the songs better and you might come to the conclusion that they're all in drop D. But in fact there are many tunings that have that in common that the G is located here and that by itself doesn't tell us the difference. Now I want to talk a bit about how we group guitar tunings because that helps a lot when you're approaching a record. You have to find out what the tuning is first in order to learn to play the guitar parts because you can't play the guitar correctly in the wrong tuning. Now 
what I do is the first thing I do is I separate in guitar tunings into slap keys and to the blues rock kind of uh, tunings. And those are the tunings that have only perfect intervals in the bass. Uh, so in the slap key, you might run into a non-perfect interval in the three bass strings. But in rock and roll and blues, you'll find that all, it's always a perfect interval in these three strings. It can be perfect fourth, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, perfect fifth, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, or perfect fifth, perfect fourth. And that describes the D family of tunings, the G family, the standard tuning family, and the C family. And the other ones, the, the slap key guitar have some other, like a minor third or some other interval in these three bass strings. And they tend to stand out because they are obviously of a different tonality and um, they do not have the usual shuffle positions. So those tunings like Mauna Loa and Kona and so forth, they, um, they're, they're fairly distinctive, I think, and I think you can recognize them pretty easily. So in the D family, we have this kind of structure here, where we go up to the seventh fret. Now, the size of the guitar makes it so we tune it nominally in fourths or five frets at a time, and that's because you sort of the size is appropriate for one finger per fret and when you get up to the fifth fret you want to go to the next string. And that's different than mandolin or violin where you typically go up to the seventh fret and the fingers will sort of skip frets in a diatonic pattern. So in guitar we like it. It makes a nice smooth condition if we have uh, five frets interval between every string. So in the D family, we have the seven. I have to go up to the seventh fret. Until I get to the equal to the next string. That's like a, an extension or a gap in the scale. And it causes a problem when you want to play a scale because you get kind of messed up when you go across that gap. And it causes awkward problems for chords sometimes that you need to relearn. But it also changes the tonality because you get this kind of note. And it's a little bit different position. And you get other kinds of... Uh, tonal features that are not found if you tune the guitar in a different way. So the D family has this nice power chord. That moves up and down the neck. to open G, and I've got this, this power chord again. Now, sometimes it's pretty hard to tell what's going on in the Beatles guitar because there's so much layering and uh, overdubbing and uh, sound effects and different things that can be really hard to hear the guitar part clearly. But at the same time, I find that a lot of times you find a home for a Beatles song on a guitar where there's a very special place for it.
see Beatles guitar compositions is they're very simple, they're very elemental, they're usually played with just one or two fingers so that they can be played quickly, expressively, and without stumbling over awkward chords. Now, if you look at the printed music for that song in the Hal Leonard sheet music, and they published tons and tons of sheet music where they, they uh, put out the piano music and then they put some guitar chords over it, and you're supposed to be able to figure out how to play it. And that song is actually in the key of D on the record. And probably the guitar is capoed up or tuned up a little bit or something so that he's actually playing it in the guitar key of G, but in the recorded or the observed key of D. Now if you write the music out in D, instead of the key that John composed the song in, then you have a situation where every pitch in the sheet music is perfectly correct, but there isn't a single correct guitar position. All of the notes are being played in the wrong place on the guitar and they don't sound right. And when I look at the sheet, Hal Leonard sheet, mu Hal, Hal Leonard, uh, sheet music for Norwegian Wood, I can tell immediately that there's something really wrong with the arrangement because first of all they have the actual chords in the record and then they have the guitar chords and they run them together and that's very confusing and then second of all they have the guitar play playing in the key of D in standard tuning which is not a very good key for standard and it gives you this arrangement where the bass string is not used once in the entire song and that doesn't really make sense to me that John Lennon would write a song on the guitar and he would play all of the notes on strings two through six and never touch the bass string. That just wouldn't be a very good guitar arrangement. So I can see when I look at that immediately that the person who has arranged it does not understand how it's actually played. And you look at the music, you think this is the official Hal Leonard uh, Beatles arrangement. It must be right. And so you get in this kind of thing like if, if I play the wrong notes enough, they'll, they'll sound right. I'll make them sound right by practicing enough. And the fact is you're never going to get there and you don't even begin to understand how John composed that song until you find the tuning that he's in. And you can not play that G uh, lick in standard tuning, but it just doesn't have the same effect when it's over a G that you have to hold down with your thumb or your finger and play the melody over, whereas here those notes over a field that says G. The whole guitar says G and I'm adding the melody to it. I don't have to create the G, it's already there. And one song that's always interested me is this one. Let's see if I can do it. finds a really nice home in open G because he can slam these bar chords around. He's got 
the bar D over this open drum. Back to the G, E, A minor, and C. Now if you listen to the record, it's too hard to hear the guitar to know clearly what the chords are. But you, it's really hard to get this effect to go. It walks up to that G, makes it sound like a march. And I don't think you can do that in standard tuning. In fact, I don't think you can do it in uh, open D either. Now, one of the interesting things about um, open G is this tonic note on the second string and the dominant note on the bass string and it kind of gets in your way because you're always playing the tonic on the, the second string and as Keith Richards says this string gets in the way and the story goes supposedly that Keith Richards took the first string off because it was in his way and just started playing in G like where G would be the bass string and it could reach it real easily. But actually I, I think that's kind of misleading. And sometimes there are other ways to approach that problem. And one of the most interesting is the drop C variation. Now drop C is like drop D. I'm starting from open G and then I lower the bass string down another two frets to C, which is about as low as it can go. So that's the drop C variant of open G and it's really an interesting tuning because it shifts the uh, favored keys in the f direction of C. Because you have the C in the bass. And it matches the C bar here. And the funny thing is, you have, let's say, the terminology I'm going to use here, this is C2. And this is C1. And that C1 is like so it up and it's really at the low end of the notes that you can hear and you don't have good separation between the notes and one of the reasons is called the missing fundamental and what that means is this C2 is not supposed to have a C1 overtone it's just C2 that's the lowest note in the system and you can't go any lower than that but it will make a C2 vibration by driving, a C1 vibration by driving the C1 string. So if I play this, see if you can hear this. This is C2. Stop it. And you can't really hear it too well. But my point is. you cannot hear that I have a move to the drop C variant. You cannot hear that C bass note separately, but it's definitely there and it definitely creates a powerful bottom end. And so I think this is probably what they're doing in a song like One After uh, 909. shuffle and then on top of it this is the C shuffle you get this one off of the bottom string so that makes a really interesting rocking uh, guitar position for C, you don't get that tonality that easy with that, that big bottom end. And I think this is the basis of 
a joke that John and uh, that Paul and George played on John when they were recording one after 909. Because what you hear in one of the outtakes is they're playing along like this. <laughs> And all of a sudden, Paul throws down on his pick and he says, you can't play that lick like that, just going na 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 on and on. And what that tells me is that they fixed it up so Paul was playing the, the, the shuffle in the standard tuning C position and it took his whole hand and his little finger and after a while he got really tired of playing it and he couldn't do it. Whereas in this C tuning, you can play this shuffle all night long. You're playing it with your strongest fingers, and it just isn't that hard. So, all of the G family tunings have a C variant hear it on the record, but it affects the notes that are being played in a very dramatic way. <laughs> 